How you doing? Good. How are you doing? I'm doing great. It's like the night before a big quiz, you know, you just want to make sure you've crammed and gotten all the information correct. I'm looking over my notes and still nervous, got to tell you, you know. Well, uh, understandable. You've got you've got a lot to tell us tonight. Why are these two Romans fighting each other? That sounds like the setup of a joke. Why did these two Romans walk into a bar? Well, yes, we, we do have a lot. I've got a two-page, uh, single-spaced <laughs> sheet here, and I'm going to try to cram all of my notes into under ten minutes. So please bear with me if I if I go really, really fast, because there is a lot of... Uh, strategically, big picture, there's a lot of stuff going on here that has led us to this point that we've seen actually over two of the, uh, the expansions. And then when we actually talk about our battle tonight, which is number 309, the Battle of Ilerda in Spain, that's actually very straightforward. So I, I apologize that I'm going to give you so much background information, but this is to reinforce everything that we've done thus far, and then we'll talk specifically about the battle here for the last part. The story so far, the first triumvirate, remember that little deal? That ran from uh, 60 to 53 BC, and it was an informal alliance among the three prominent politicians in Rome at the time. We we see one of them uh, here, that's uh, Julius Caesar, guys, Julius Caesar. We also have Pompeius Magnus and Marcus Licinius Crassus. And we've gone through scenarios multiple times with each of these players. During this time, they were all uh, joined politically, and they all had a reason. They all had a sort of expediency or a need for doing this. It, however, collapsed when Marcus Crassus was killed in 53 BC while he was on a military campaign in the, the eastern provinces in Syria. But in the pro within the triumvirate itself, Caesar was, ironically, he was considered the political leg because he was the people person. Pompey was the military guy because he had all of that military cachet from, from all of his campaigns. And Crassus, of course, as we've t told you time and again, he's the money man. He's the one that kept the wheels moving because he could throw the, the lucre around. Caesar was politically aligned with the populares. We are coming back to that again. They were the, the lower class people, the, the common people. And uh, this is stems from his Marian background, while Crassus and Pompey were more from the wealthier, more socially and politically conservative optimates. Uh, but the alliance itself of the triumvirate was, was cemented by the fact that Julius Caesar's daughter, Julia, was married to Pompey for a time. And upon her death, that would be another rift that was caused in the triumvirate. Once uh, Crassus dies, that that power that is from the money purse strings, that is removed. And that was often a balancing factor between the, the two other gentlemen. Once he's out of the picture, that caused the schism to deepen even further between Caesar and Pompey. So what we've seen in our previous expansion and the last couple of battles, uh, from 59 to 53 BC, Caesar has given governorship of multiple provinces, and the Senate has essentially wanted him out of their hair. They, they realize that because he's so popular with the people, they want to send him to control and conquer the forests and the wild people of the north. And that's what he does. And they even renew his proconsulship for another five years halfway between that, which is usually unheard of. It's just on an annual basis, but he gets another five years. However, this is also beneficial to Caesar because he has a lot of rivals who have dug up a lot of dirt on him. And he fears that he is, if he ever gets out of the military and goes back to Rome, he is going to be a victim of prosecution from all of these rivals. So while he's under this proconsul umbrella, he is safe from any kind of prosecution from the Senate. So this is working to his advantage as well. But all of this is going to change in 52 BC. So just a year after Crassus dies, the Roman Senate... I guess at this point they have tired of Caesar and his adventures. They decide to formally support Pompey as the single sole consul of Rome. But all of Caesar's conquests in Gauls and all of the news coming from the north has made him very popular 
with the people, hence the populares, right? Um, so this causes the Senate to fear that he can cause the people to rise up and go against the Senate, and they decide that they're going to push back and put the screws to Caesar a little bit. So with Pompey's help, they decide to be proactive, and they want to strip him of his military power. So they request hence they request, that's air quotes that I'm doing here, that he disband his legions and give up his title as general, finish out his proconsul term, and then come back to Rome. Caesar gets the word of this, and he writes back in 50 BC, he says, I'm fine with that decision. However, I'm going to only do it if Pompey has to do it too. If you make him give up all of his military titles and disband any legions he has, then we'll both be equal, and that's fine, and I'll do it. And the Senate says, eh, because Pompey's there with them, they're not going to do that. They're not supportive of that idea. So they release the Consultum Ultimum, which is uh, an edict that requires, now in big bold letters, it requires immediate disbanding of all legions under Caesar's control while he's coming back from the north. And this leads us now to our story that we've heard since time immemorial when we were all school children in history class that uh, he decides to disregard that order and he starts to march towards Cisalpine Gaul back towards Rome. He approaches the river Rubicon which is on the northern boundary of the Italian part of the peninsula there and on January 10th in 49 BC he crosses the Rubicon famously saying in Latin, Alea Yactia Est, the die is cast. And this is what is going to transition officially that Roman Republic into the very quick slide we will see over the next 20 years towards a military uh, imperial Rome going forward. What's funny about this is Caesar only has one legion. He has Legion 13 with him. And the presumption is in Rome by the Senate and Pompey is he's got all of his legions and he's marching on Rome with a full complement. And so Pompey says, you know what? I'm out of here. And so he encourages a lot of the other optimates to uh, go on vacation to the uh, southern lands near Capua. And they kind of all exit Rome, the city itself. He says, I cannot defend the city from Caesar, so I'm going to leave. And he makes a tactical, quote, fighting withdrawal to the south and leaves Rome to Caesar, who enters the city, of course, to much fanfare by the people. Uh, but Caesar continues on and pursues Pompey towards the south. Pompey's big plan is to uh, exit the peninsula and go over to uh, Epirus, which is the the Greek Roman province is on the other side of the Adriatic. And Caesar manages to catch him down there in a town, uh, or the port city of Brucindium. And w one of the more famous stories that they're trying to exit the harbor, and Caesar has managed to actually not wall in, but he's built all of these very intricate war machines on floating platforms out at the mouth of the harbor to try to take down all of the Pompeian fleet as they're leaving. And they do manage to escape. They get out to Epirus, and at that point, Caesar's, he turns his eyes towards some of the other Pompeian forces. Uh, he figures if he can't get Pompey directly, he'll start, dis he'll start taking apart his individual army. So within one month of that, he actually heads all the way back around to Hispania, which we've seen in the, in the previous, during the Sertorian Wars. Uh, he gets delayed a little bit in the modern-day city of Marseille uh, to help with a siege there, but within a couple of months of that, he passes through the Pyrenees, and he arrives at the city of Alerta, which we are here tonight. Um, his... Legate there is Fabius, who has been, uh, he's been conquering his way slowly through the Pyrenees. He's gotten control of the passes, and now he is facing off against the two Pompeian legates here, which are Petraeus and Afranius. And they have managed to set up camp outside the city of Alerta. And they've been there a while. They've got a very good defensible position. And they've also managed to forage and strip all of the surrounding land of good food and fodder for their animals. So by the time Fabius arrives, uh, it's it's pretty well picked clean, and they have all kinds of troubles supporting their army 
uh, once they're camped there. But once Caesar arrives, he realizes that we see this hill right in the middle here uh, is a great tactical advantage. And he decides he wants that hill. And so much of a history is about wanting that hill. And Caesar begins the push to... Uh, to take that hill, but the Pompeian forces, as you can see, are closer. They manage to occupy the hill first. And Caesar and all of his legions, as they approach, are under withering missile fire. So Caesar has to make a decision to either press forward toward it or to fall back. And he actually does a fighting uh, retreat briefly. But he, this, is, this battle, the way he describes it, and there's a very large uh, description of it from Caesar's wonderful third person, where he describes uh, attacking multiple waves and then eventually turning this into a, a battle of maneuver where he eventually moves his forces towards the city of Alerta. He manages to push them off the hill, take the hill, and then pushes them all the way by inspiring his men all the way to take the ramparts of Alerta themselves. Uh, this will kind of be a stalemate. Uh, Caesar will describe the, uh, the of course, as a victory for himself. I think he will say that he lost 70 men, whereas the Pompeian forces lost about 200 with a few of their uh, centurions, their noble centurions. And the aftermath of this is there will be some quite a bit of maneuvering. Um, it's during a very sodden part of the year where a lot of the snow melt and a lot of rains in this part of Spain will make the ground and the rivers very difficult for a while. So Caesar will be literally bogged down in some of this chasing the Pompeian forces after this battle for a little bit. And then he will eventually return it to Fabius's control and then he'll go back to assist with the siege of Marseille on his way back to Rome for uh, his, his next big chapter of you know, his life. All of this is the, for the first open battle between the Pompeian forces and the Caesarian forces. And uh, this is how we're going to, I believe, do the next at least seven or eight battles between Caesar and Pompey. So you will see these two titles on the on the map here for quite a few of these scenarios. So that's where we are tonight. Once again, history has given us a battle that is about a hill. <laughs> Take that hill. And that's what we're going to fight over tonight, I think. So why don't you tell us a little bit about the War Council? Okay. Well, the Pompeian army is going to have uh, five command cards. And they'll be moving first. They're represented by the gray block, so Patrick will take them first. The Caesarian army has six command cards, and we are fighting to seven banners tonight. Looks to be a bit of a straight-up battle, but there are a few wrinkles. First, we have scalable city walls again uh, to mark off the boundaries of Alerta. If you remember from last week, scalable city walls means... You have to start in the adjacent hex and use all of your movement to move onto the wall. Or if you're moving off of the wall, it takes all of your movement and you only move into the adjacent hex. Defending the city walls, if you're on the wall or fighting someone on the wall, both units would be capped at two dice. The defender gets to ignore swords and flags, or one of each. In addition, if the defending unit elects not to evade, they get to strike first as if they played the first strike card. When feigning on a scalable wall from range combat, they get to disregard one flag, and the scalable city walls do block line of sight to any units that might be behind it. Uh, the river over here on the right-hand side of the map will be impassable, limiting the battle space tonight. So cards played on the Caesarian right flank and the Pompeian left flank won't be as effective. Both armies will get to use the Julian Legion rules. So that means the heavy and mounted units can throw spears, one hex, and they can also move two hexes and not fight. The Julius Caesar rule is in effect. So that means any unit attached that Caesar is attached to gets to move to and fight and adds one additional die to their roll. Notice that both sides have camps. If a unit occupies an enemy camp at the beginning of that player's turn, remove the enemy camp and score a victory banner. Well, actually, when both camps are removed, score a victory banner. And finally, 
Patrick mentioned the all important hills here in the center of the board. If the Caesar units occupy and more hills in the center section, they collect one victory banner. Uh, that that will be a neat wrinkle. I'm curious if uh, how much blood we're going to expend over this little hillock that they call it. Uh, and the way Caesar describes it, it really wasn't very high ground, but it was quite important to Caesar. Caesar wants it. Caesar will have it. Well, good. All right. Well, I'm uh, I'm excited. I. With the, as you said, with that whole right flank, left and right flank there, uh, being mostly impassable, how much effort is going to be expended towards Alerta itself? It's not like it does too much for you. Uh, plus the camps are on the back rows again. So I think just the way you and I play these things, it's just going to come down to beating the hell out of each other. <laughs> That's what we do. Well, uh, after the last two weeks, I need to change what I'm doing here. So I can't afford another another crushing defeat. <laughs> so I'll have to rethink my drink here and hopefully the card fall my way tonight. All right. Well, I get to go first. Was that right? So I will draw right. my five cards. Let's see. One, two, three, four, and five. I will draw six. And before... Since you take the first turn, let me wish you good luck. Why, thank you, and good luck to you. Uh, gosh, gee, what we're going to do here? I guess we will do inspired center leadership. Let's see if we can't recreate some history here. Let's see. Leader plus four. Those five. These guys will... March, march, march! Take the hill, and they will go there. They will go there. And that is all I can do since they're, they don't have range and everybody else moved too, so I will call that a turn. I will inspire the troops on my left. Leaders Hex and four adjacent linked Hexes. Okay. You know, Auxilia moved two hexes, so they're done for the round. There's nothing in range of these heavies with their light spears, but the dreaded slingers moved one. Boo! Means they can take one shot on the hill and miss. I believe I will do a line command here. these and they're all just going to take a step forward there activate two units in the center mean those two units and again we'll throw one spear oh that does nothing <laughs> but great for morale. I think we will do two on the right. And bring the cavalry out. Three center units. Those three. And let's see, no matter where I go, you're supported, so I'll just keep 
pecking there. Nothing. And nothing. Let's do three on the left. And will be those two only. That's a big right. that's a big line. That is a big, big line. Oh, let's see how we're going to execute here. Start there with the slingers. They moved one, so that means they get to roll one die. Boo! <laughs> yes, it's going to be that kind of a night. One, two, and three. Feeling pretty smug about that shot, aren't you? You have no... <laughs> you should have seen the fist pumping when I roll a flag. <laughs> Alright, the Auxilia will see if they can't follow up with the same roll. Let's see if the, uh, Vassal die the RNG roller. works in my favor for a change. Oh, nah. Well, it's still a hit. Nah. Nah. Okay. Let's see. We'll start here. Going up the hill. Capped at two dice. Nothing. Three dice back down the hill with leader support. Three hits. Oh. Three dice uphill with leader support this time. Three back, also leader support. Just one. Okay. Um, one spear there. Unless you want to retreat. No, I'm good. Another spear. <sighs> yes, get them all out of the way now. <laughs> and one more spear. <sighs> that is everything. I believe I'm Spartacus. But we'll see. Let's roll five dice and see what we get. Two leaders. Uh, flags. All right. We'll just... Two ennies and one green. Okay. Well, the green is going to be that one, and the two yes. ennies are going to be those two. So, let us... Let's do a shot here. From here to here. It's two dice or three dice, right? Three dice and get nothing. Okay, uh, we'll do Petraeus onto that unit now with four dice plus leader bonus and get two hits. A hit. One hit. All right. Check that leader. Okay. Hmm. Very, very tempting. <sighs> but it's a great hill. So let's see if we can't. Let's take out that unit if we can, with four dice downhill plus leader. Just barely. And. We will not advance off the hill. Okay, uh, I'm going to reshuffle the deck and draw my card. 
That was a fun card. I'll try it too. Are you Spartacus too? So we're rolling six dice. Mm. Okay. Okay. That's uh yeah. Let's see what we got. Do with that. Those three-ish units. Both the slingers first, three dice on that cavalry unit. Caesar chainsaw revving up. Yeah. Let's go here first. So four dice with leader support on those mediums. Plus, plus one for Spartans. five dice. With, with, yep. Hmm. So two hits, two retreats. Okay. Um, we will take both of those retreats. This will be normally two, but with Spartacus, three dice going uphill with your support. And getting a hit and a retreat. Ah. Do you wish to climb the hill? Mm. Yeah, we'll take that final advance. Caesar in his rage. So... We are done. Okay. Caesar's raging for your success on the hill. It was not his glory. We will do three in the center. Mm -hmm. Now we'll start here. Hill to hill. This will be three dice plus leader bonus. Three hits. Ooh. Okay, there's the leader check. It's okay. Same thing coming back at you. Not quite as good. Two hits now. All right. Leader check. All right. Uh, this one will go up the hill. Two dice with leader bonus. Two hits. Here's the leader check. He's okay. All right. We will advance up the hill. Uh, and then these guys will just throw one at Caesar. Getting nothing. Yeah, I'm kind of getting sucked into this stupid hill fight, aren't I? Now, the stupid die roller of course. does its streak. Right. Okay. Three on the right. These guys will throw two dice at your auxilia. Also, two dice at your auxilia. Guys, we'll do three dice at Drogzilia. Two more hits. Hit back. All right. Those two units. 
shall evade. Evade away. Three dice. Oh. All right. Mm. All right, well. We'll use the now useless mounted charge. And we'll activate these guys to do two shots at your auxilia. Wiping them out. Here they come. Six dice against those mediums. Oof. Three dice going uphill. Okay, so one hit, two retreats. Beer. And we're done. Three units in the center. I'm going to separate Petraeus and the heavy here. So it's going to be this, this, and this. These guys are going to go two to there. They're going to come up on the hill. Look at that beautiful maneuvering. Okay, so that is all. Two dice going uphill. We'll your support. Leader check. Petraeus is fine. Three back down with uh, leader sport. Three hits. Ooh. Vicious. Two dice going uphill for your support. Mm. Petraeus loses his legion. And Petraeus himself. Fine. They will advance to take the hill. I will give you a special victory block banner. Ooh, look at you. Fancy. There you go. And then Caesar going downhill. Four dice, since he's Caesar. A hit. Just one hit. Here's the leader check. So you can't ignore the flag. I will keep it and fight back up the hill with two dice plus leader. Forcing Caesar off the hill! Mm. Take the hill. in the center. We both have gotten so many center cards in this game. Right. I haven't gotten a single right flank card. Oh, oh I'm fishing for some banners. All right. I'll do this one first. So... 
Five dice plus leader bonus. Let's attack here. Another five dice plus leader. Oops. Here's the check for that. He's okay. And then uh, Petraeus down here. Let's go against, go against that one. So uh, three dice plus leader bonus. One hit. And a retreat that I can't take. Uh, well, oh, that's correct. Yes. Three dice with leader bonus coming back since I'm pinned. Ooh. Hit and check that leader. Check the leader check. He's fine. So we'll just Only one retreat. Just the one. And I believe that is all. Well, that was a, a well-timed push, so I'm not going to play that card. So instead, I will play this card. And just see if I can't put a pin in this. First, we'll go with Caesar. Six dice on that unit. Three hits, two retreats. And that will potentially, well, that will do it because I have no retreat path. So hit, hit, hit. Go ahead and see the leader. He's fine. Okay. And then, yeah, I would have to lose another block. So that will go there. He will fall back there. He will aggressively attack again uphill now with three dice Ooh, nothing right we get three back down with leader bonus two hits here's a leader check for caesar he's okay all right and then hill to hill with three dice and leader support There it is. Well done. Because of that banner. The hill. Always the hill. But very close. Yeah, that uh, having that terrain is having that as a as a dangling object there to just everybody you, after. You you timed your your cleanup charge just in time because that oh, was coming yeah. next. All rally around Caesar. Well, that was great. And there you go. There's uh, yeah. there's my two blues. Yep. That was good. Uh yeah, I I had two mounted charges and uh you always managed to dis not distract me, but keep my focus required on Caesar and the hill before I could I was gonna do this beautiful flanking charge against your lone auxilia there, and then the first time you threw that flag and, and scattered them, it's like, oh, damn it. So that puts off an entire plan, and then I drew another mounted charge, and uh, I, they were just useless because before I could even use the first one, you, you managed to wipe them both out. But uh, this is a great one. I like it. I, I had wanted to focus on that side just because the hills are hard to take. You know, I mean, Pompey can get there on his first turn if he's got a center card. And then, you know, it's it's a dice game. I mean, yes, he's a bit of an equalizer. He is. But it was just throwing guys at that hill. And, you I mean, you just look at all four of those five blocks are from the center from trying to take that hill. Well, I realized that I should have done this and brought him down here or something closer uh, so that he would have been able to support both of these guys. Because, yeah, once you saw the gap in the leadership and you went down here to attack, I was like, uh-oh, Caesar's... <laughs> it literally was a chainsaw, but I got off lucky because... I, I, I got a little... 
well, I had intended to just work my way to the right, but when I rolled so well with Caesar, I decided to go back it, back toward the center. And because the only thing I had to carry me through to the right was a leadership any section card, I didn't actually have any right cards, so I didn't know how far that would carry me. Well, I had one moment there where I was gonna I I had this and you had Caesar I guess he was he was here or something and I was gonna I was gonna sweep in and trap him uh, and then have him at my mercy to you know the spider and the fly and all that but you managed to uh, to to get up that hill and have a, an exit retreat path so good game let's uh let's take five and we will reset for round two. All right. See you then. See you then. We are back with round number two in our soft dulcet tones now as we return to calmness and composure for I am now going to be Caesar. And I will get six command cards. All right. Three, four, five, and six. All right. And good luck to you, sir. Good luck. All right. Go. All worked up. Here we go. We're going to go now. We're going to do this. Hey, copycat. Eh, well. Um... You want to bring Afranius out to play? Yeah, you do. All right, come get me. Of course, I say that. Captain Flag here will just roll up to a hill and roll two flags. <laughs> Sorry, General Flag. General Flag, yes, that's that's me. Yes. Let me let me work in my eighties <laughs> pop culture reference there. I'm going to order my medium troops. Mm -hmm. So they are done. Order two in the center. Be Caesar. Mm. Getting some extra bodies into that fight. Good call. Guess it's time to do that. It's been a while since I've done it. I have one of those. Let's see, we'll do this. This guy's here. All right. It's gonna be a fight. It's gonna be scrappy. So we'll do uh, four dice against Afranius here with leader bonus. Three hits. Ouch. There's the leader check. It's okay. I dice back at you. Three hits. Two retreats. Hit, hit, hit. Let's make that leader check. So only one retreat, should you wish. Or two. Wanna... Um, we'll take both of them. 
have this one against the same target with four dice plus leader bonus from Caesar. Get him. There's leader check. Front ace is okay. I'll do that. Okay. Uh, we will not advance. And then we'll do two dice up the hill here with a Caesar's bonus. Getting two hits. Well, that was doing. Hits back. We'll do three dice up the hill. And get a hit. And One hit. hit. Hit on Caesar. Clear check. Okay. I believe that is all. I use that. To activate Petraeus' unit. Three dice going downhill at them. Hit. Two back up with leader. Uh, one hit. Here's a leader check. <gasps> of course. Of course. <laughs> of course. Of course. Of course. I love this game. <laughs> Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Uh, re inspires our men. Unbelievable. Do three in the center. Caesar will attempt to finish that unit on the hill. Three dice plus leader. Does. And come up here. And battle against this one. So four dice downhill plus leader. Two hits, two retreats. And then this unit will work on that one. Uh, two dice uphill plus leader. One hit. Get one hit. You get one more. Okay, one hit. All right. That is all. Your dice from the bowman on the wall. any section. Uh, let's see. We'll start here. Do four dice plus leader bonus. Two hits. Oh, leader check. Right. Okay, he's fine. Uh, they will advance. Um, these guys will go uphill with Caesar looking on. Two dice. One hit. Mm. Retreat. Not a moment of triumph. Uh, 
Now Caesar, go four dice at the same target. There, and we will battle again against these guys. Four dice downhill, plus leader, just one hit. Mm. One hit on Caesar. And the leader check, he's fine. Three dice hill to hill. Hmm. Good, good one. And Caesar. Dooms to fight another day. All right, well, advance. Target them with four dice now with leader support. Hit and a retreat. And as they ground the hill, three more dice coming down. Nothing. Yeah, I'm up to hell. Two dice. One hit. Uh -huh. Yeah, I got you off the hill, but uh, the end is in sight. Let's see if we can't do this. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. All right, so one, two up the hill. One, two, one, two, three. Three. Okay. So these guys Come up the hill with two dice plus leader bonus. Nothing. Three dice coming down. Also nothing. Okay, and then two dice up the hill again, leader bonus. Nothing. In return, mm. they hit. Bloody, bloody. Okay. Four dice. Two. Four back with leader. Wipe out. Three dice coming downhill. I got him. Leader check. Three dice coming downhill. Hmm. Close. Two up the hill. Two hits. Leader check. Hmm. Well, 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 well. Hmm. I think I've got to do a counter attack on that. Try this. So Caesar here. We'll attempt to attack up the hill with three dice plus leader bonus. And force retreat. Capturing the hill for the victory. Hooray. 
that could have gone either way because you were in mopping up territory at this point. So if I didn't play, maybe, that... maybe, I just drew a rally. So that's probably what I was going to do <sighs> next. Man, <laughs> that would have that would have done nothing. Well, yeah. but it's the fact that you've you've had two rallies in two games back to back, man, and I haven't seen yeah. one in four scenarios. Oh yeah. boy. That was that I dodged that bullet twice tonight. But uh so the last well one Well done. Yeah, the last that was, one was that was brutally efficient. <laughs> well, Caesar. <laughs> yes. Uh so final score on the last game was seven five. Peter getting seven, I got five. And this one I got seven, Peter got three. So that is uh, twelve to ten. So I take the series by two if my arithmetic skills are correct tonight but uh what are what's our th what are our thoughts on this one final thoughts <sighs> deceptive i mean it certainly feels like with the hills and the pompeians being able to get to the hills relatively easy that they're in a good defensive position but caesar's got you know quite like the overwhelming force to throw at said hill. Um, you did a far better job of whittling that down on when you were the pump hands than I did. Um, yeah, that's just rough. And again, weird, weird hand. I mean, most of my cards were center. I, you know, I had, a, I had a bunch of left cards too, but nothing really to do over there yeah. until you started creeping up into range right well i had another i am spartacus but you know you would think <laughs> after lucy has pulled that damn football away so many times i i just last last game it was somewhat helpful but my history with it has been pretty bleak thus far um yeah this one i once i had that double time right from the beginning and that's that that caused me as you you even noted there like oh you know, you're packing the line there, bringing Caesar up. That gave me a moment to kind of bring him up. And then that way, when I did the double time, I could spread him out and have some go after Afranius and some for the hill. And, uh, yeah, I, I kind of like what you did there, bringing the mediums to support the back of the hill, just so you would have, in case anyone gets pushed back uh, or or gets reduced they're not immediately going to flee off the hills so yeah. that, that well, or and just support because a flag knocks guys off the hills so especially after just <laughs> uh, losing Petraeus like that uh, that yeah. was just <laughs> I that, see. That, that was the signal I was like oh yep I'm not winning this one <laughs> but you had the you, you know you had the leader right next door so uh, at least he could pick up it wasn't a total loss. You still had support on the hill, and I was I was pretty tentative. Uh, I mean, you call it whittling, and that's that was what I ended up doing was taking it a piece, and then any time I could attack anybody at the base of the hill, that was certainly uh, much more manageable. But obviously, it's optim optimizing the dice rolls with the mediums because you got a lot of mediums, right. but well, if they're just well, rolling, the, up... certainly the Caesarians have the advantage that they can attack the hills and when they start their blocks start dwindling fall back the pompeians don't have the troops to do that that's right you know they only have six hexes of blocks where you know the caesarians are going up there with eight so you, you've got more opportunities to you know engage fully yep i agree with that uh but a great series tonight i really enjoyed this scenario um we definitely want to hear your feedback, so take a moment down there in the comments section if you played this one, how it worked out for you. Did you focus on the hills as we did here, or did you work the flanks? Was Alerta ever a factor at all? That is what we love to hear from you guys is your own experiences, and of course, if you catch anything we did wrong that I didn't manage to catch and post and note, this is, uh, this is your chance to do so, but we are uh, overwhelmed with the amount of support that we're getting, and... 
And I'm just going to tell you right now, Peter, we got our first monthly subscriber. I'm announcing it right here. Uh, this is a shout out for all eternity here on YouTube. Richard Salisbury, you are our first monthly supporter. So thank you for giving your monetary uh, support for our little channel and our endeavor here. We really appreciate that. Uh, it's certainly not necessary, but it shows that we are we're striking a chord with the viewers. So I appreciate that. It's viewers like you that keep us going. Ah, I wish we had a free tote. Oh, we need to get a tote bag. We need some kind of branding. We need branding, man. Uh, but do click that like button and the uh, subscribe if you've not yet subscribed. If you just stumbled across this video because the YouTube algorithm said, hey, you might like this, then please take a moment and do so. And that uh, lets, lets us know that you are enjoying the content each and every week. We're over 70 weeks on this, and we're going to keep cranking them out. We've got two more big scenario boxes to go, and uh, who knows where we're going to go from there. We could go to medieval. We may go take a sidestep and go to samurai battles. We just don't know, but uh, we are certainly glad you're here with us, and thank you, sir, for a fantastic series tonight, though. Any final thoughts for the evening? Go out and capture a hill? <laughs> yes. Yes. In, in honor of great Petraeus, we pull one out for thee. A great game tonight, sir. I hope you have a great week, and good night to all of you. Good night. Good night.